Repeat the oil chain, but before we do that, I want to show you that um, the oil seal will always face the open lip area where the spring is, always will face against where the oil is actually going to be flooded and contained at. And we also want to apply a little bit of Mobile One Synthetic uh, just to the inner rings uh, as well because it will be riding with pretty much the shaft and we don't want any friction to cause any kind of um, pretty much uh, rubber damage onto the oil seal. So we're going to go in and put a little dab here of uh, Mobile One Synthetic. So here we go, we're going to put it right in there, okay, get it all in there, and then we're going to also change, the, pretty much we're going to change the cam chain as well, I want to show you how, we're going to go ahead, you're going to need a 516 uh, uh, Allen socket, so like this right here, I'm going to go ahead, right there, so 516. Allen socket like that. That way we can go ahead and flip this over. We're going to go ahead and ch put the uh, chain guide first, and then we're going to go ahead and feed in our, our uh, pretty much our cam chain. So let's go ahead and uh, get that package open. Okay, it's kind of sealed very good. There we go. There we go. We got a brand new cam chain there. So it sees right there nicely sealed and it goes only a certain direction so we're gonna go ahead and break that bolt here and I'll show you in just a second here we go loosen it lefty loosey righty tidy and this also has an uh, an o-ring to make sure that the oil doesn't f uh, flood out uh, just a second here you can see there it's brand new it has this oil ring there you go, see, very nice. Okay, it goes a certain direction. If you do forget direction where it goes to, just remember, so just follow this line right here, how it has a little bump. So the line indicates that it's gonna lay in the lower level like this. So that's what we'll do, we'll sort it out. We'll insert it from here. And you can see the groove, and there it goes. Just comes right out on the other end. Just fit right in the slot, see there, right there. And then we can go ahead and put back our time and chain. And you want to make sure you hand tighten this really nice. And to make sure that it feels like it's going into the groove. And there you go. You got it all in there. Just give it a good tighten. Get some, uh, even some blue Loctite on it as well. So we're going to go ahead and tighten it down. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and feed our cam chain here. There we go. We want to feed the cam chain gap because that's the last component that's in between us putting the um, pretty much the uh, crankcase stroker. So we're going to go ahead and feed that in there. And our crank hose coaster again, keep in mind, is already chill. So it's ready to go. And we're going to go back and touch up everything before we put oil. We're going to put our blue Loctite and everything. But we, before we do that, we want to make sure that everything flows correctly. So I don't usually pretty much put the blue Loctite until I'm for certain that all the uh, pieces are pretty much fitting together. So there we go. We got enough of it in there. Let's go ahead and take our stroker here out of the freezer. And then this was previously heated before, so it's already gone. So here we go. Okay. So we got our stroker now. Try to do it here, sitting here, you can see it off this angle. Okay, it's very cold. So there we go. You can see it at the ice level. Uh, keep in mind though, wherever the uh, Woodrow key is, it's gonna be facing the opposite from the variator uh, strap. So we're going toward the non stroker. And then you also wanna make sure that your stroker arm, right here, you also want to make sure that your stroker arm is extended out and it's going to the loop. So the Woodrow key is facing us and we're coming down from it. And then the smooth side right here is going to the variator itself. So here we go. We're going to go and put it inside the variator. I mean going inside. So this is going to be coming out through the, the CV2 for the variator. So here we go. We're starting it in and you're going to have to lift it up a little bit. And it should go in pretty smoothly. Make sure it's not interfering with your chain. So you want to get your chain out of your way. 
it's best to try to do it. There we go. That's why it blocks it up a little bit. So you can do it this way, give it a little bit more room. That way you can see where your chain is. One hand supports the chain, and the other hand just kind of move the chain out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the chain out of the way, kind of clear that circle there I was telling you about. And then we can just fit it right in. Okay, that's much clearer as I can get. Come on, I'll give you a show. See how that went? That clear chain, I tucked it right behind it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much uh, slide the crankshaft onto it. Making sure again the stroker, it's cleared also where the this thing is, see? How the cold is, very nice, it just slipped right in. That's it, we got it in there now. We got our timing chain here, our stroker sitting properly. It's gonna always sort of uh, like halfway right here from the crankcase, so that means it's already in, you can see here. It's 4th of July, they're shooting some fireworks now. So, great, great celebration, because that's what's one of the challenges to get into that one. Okay, now what we're gonna do is put our new gasket. Before we do that, we gotta actually spray uh, some sealant on there so we can get that one out of the way. So let's go ahead and take care of that spraying with the gasket. I'm gonna show you how, pretty much we're gonna compress it as well. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and start the prepping of our spraying of our gasket. Here we go, there's our gasket sealer here. Okay, we wanna go ahead and put like a pan underneath there because we're gonna go ahead and spray out finish the whole thing so we got a little baking pan here and let's rest for us about seven minutes we're gonna lay out all the, all the gaskets that we're gonna be using to build our crankcase uh, again you can notice here I didn't put the CVT cover on here because I don't recommend spraying it uh, with the copper gasket sealer and the one that uh, comes with the 180 cc power kit SSPG uh, it doesn't come with none of the you can see here the cam chain gasket as well tensioner as well as the uh, intake manifold gasket those ones that were added on and also didn't come with an extra because we're extending the stroker it doesn't come with an extra um, cylinder head uh, I'm, I'm sorry the cylinder housing gasket between the can case so we actually had to go ahead and get another piece to create the thickness that we were looking for but we'll still go and go and give it a spray and that way we'll have all the gasket uh, pretty much sprayed out. The Permatex is pretty nice, you can overlap them. Uh, that way, you know, the spray gets into this, the areas there. So if you see any area that you can overlap these, just go and overlap them, like that one right there. This one's also, see, that way you can spray a little bit more per diameter. There we go, so you got one left out here, so we'll just leave it. Okay, so here we go, we'll hit it with the spray. We're gonna do a light spray, uh, pretty much to make sure that it doesn't, um, there we go, just give it a spray. This is how you use the Kermatax pack spray to spray your gasket. See how, kind of, or you can go right on it. It's, it's gonna turn into like a copper color. There we go, kind of like a little thickness to it. Almost like, so it's just building gunk on it now. And it fills in any imperfection areas in the in the casking that way it protects the oil and also the compression needed there we go just go along the line there pretty much it's pretty easy it looks like it's giving a thorough er there we go then we're gonna have to flip it also to do the other side as well you want to get it on both side coating. But we'll let this sit here for one side for at least about five minutes. And then we'll come back to it. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get our other seal. Uh, there we go. All right, we'll let this sit for about five minutes. We'll come back to this one. And that's pretty much it. We got it all there. Just kind of get any more uh, perfection line that you didn't see, like this one right here. We kind of skipped out a little bit. It was covered with the other one. So, okay. Uh, maybe some of them that didn't absorb in. Just give it a good. Okay. So we'll let it sit. Some sides are smoother, so it doesn't absorb the gasket seal right away. So 
to come back for a little bit. So we'll leave this to it. We'll come back and we'll get the other side. In the meantime, let's go ahead and work on our uh, the rest of our sealed and also insert our bearings now. Okay, we want to go ahead and hammer this uh, sealed out here. This is the seal that we want to go ahead and pretty much get out because we're going to put some new ones in. While this is still working on on this side here, I'm going to go and get a, a socket here that fits it. Uh, you can get a socket that fits it. If not, again, that sealed um, uh, pounder will work just as nicely. Here we go. All right. And this probably is a size of number six, which I mistaken earlier. Uh, this is not a number nine. It's a number six. So let's see if this one will fit. This is too big. And the next one below it would be a number five. And number five looks like uh, it's still too big. So it'll be good for flushing it. So we're gonna go back to, let's see what other one we have. Oh, there's one more. Uh, again, this is number five is too big. Obviously this is way bigger. So I'm surprised would it be a number five, but it's not. So let's see if we have something else that we might be able to use to knock that sealed out so we can put a new one. Here we go. Let me go ahead and find Okay, we got it. This is the one here. It seems like we use it for everything almost. The castle nut. Uh, we also left inside of it is pretty much the flywheel. So we're going to use that. You can see how it fits right in. Just a little bit of wig room, which is enough for us to get in there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit it with a hammer and try to go ahead and force it out. Uh, again, hopefully it won't damage it. We also have a pretty much a hydraulic compression tool if it, if it gives us a tough time. So we're going to see. What we're going to do is we're going to hit it, but it will also force this other one to come out as well. So you have that. That's the oil seal itself. Uh, this is not oil seal. Actually, it looks like an oil seal, but it actually has the bearings as well in there. So we definitely don't want to damage it, but at the same time, we need to get it out because we're replacing our new one. So here we go. We're going to hit it with a mallet hammer, and we'll see where it goes. See how see if it's coming off. Okay. So it's not kind of come out that easy. What we can do now is go ahead and take it, since we have our, we don't want to put too much damage on the, um, what do you call that? Uh, too much damage onto the bearing, because once you really hammer the bearing, it causes some damage. So we're going to take it to our hydraulic jack here. This is where we also compress our tools. So we're going to go ahead and see about getting that here. That way you can watch me set it up for compression. Here we go. Try to get in a closer view, that way you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. Okay, you're going to go and see me uh, pretty much set it up. This is what we compressed last time, is pretty much our gear. So we're going to set this aside. And I'll show you how I'm going to compress this one. You can press it out. There we go. The shaft's still much on there. We want it to make sure it falls on the other end. And we want to go and lower a little bit so we have some room to work with. Let's see if we can lower it. There we go. That lower it, we're going to go ahead and move it. Oops. This won't lower any more for us, so we're going to lower the other bar below it. So here we go. Take one more bar. All right, 
right, let's see how that will work. Yeah, we might not even have to use that X. The bar X here, but it's good that we have it. Tilt it down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Concentrate in that area. Okay. Again, what we're trying to do is force this whole bearing out, including the also is we're going to force the seal as well and we'll take out the bearings a little later okay there we go so i'm flatten yeah, we, won't, we probably won't need this x really but if it wants to help support the curvature it's fine too okay. here we go we're putting out our Next there, and then we're going to go and start jump compacting it down, pushing it out. So it's always good to have a uh, uh, machine shop can do this for you. Uh, it probably won't charge much, depending on how much the prep time it costs to set it up. But this should be fine. There we go. Here you want to, you want to tighten this, make sure it's ready to be jacked. down still we'll start feeling grip soon oh, it's gonna start there we go, there we go. now it's in it's just a, there we go. I feel it First drop is see much it's sealed. It came off nicely. It's not damaged, so we can reuse this. And waiting for our main drop. It should be coming right next. We probably push the seal away. Right? It's out. And I want to show you that. See, there we go, we got it out. And let's see how the damage it is. Actually, it's still really good. The, the orange seal is actually kept on. So everything looks good. See, it's better than hammering, because once you hammer it, you start damaging the bearings and stuff, and that's what we don't want. So we're gonna put a new high performance uh, bearing in this well, as well as a new oil seal. So let's go back there and do our thing. Okay. Okay, now that we got that off, we're gonna go ahead and prep up the oil seal as well as the new one. This is the bigger oil seal. You can see here, we're replacing what number this is. Okay, so we can get focus here. There we go. Uh, it's TC27427. Okay, so let's go and look. It's the only bigger oil seal that we have in here. There we go, the blue one. So there's only a total of four oil seals. We already put one, and this is the only bigger one out there. So this is it. You can see her side by side. See, it doesn't look much difference, but that's it. 42, TC, 27, and 7. There we go. So we're going to put that oil seal in there, as well as get our bearings out of the fridge. So we have also our bearing sets here. They're ready to be popped in. So these are our bearings right here. All right. So we're going to use pretty much the big bearings as well to replace. Or right, let's see, make sure. Oh, actually not the big bearing we're using the middle one right there that's the one and we're also changing out uh well actually i apologize it's right here it's almost the same it's actually the same color so this one's made in taiwan you can see here 
That's the difference there, Taiwan. So we want to make sure we put the Taiwan one in there. Okay, so we're going to go and open that up. It's being opened for the first time. Let's see if I can get something to poke it. Poke it through. Pretty thick bag. There we go. Alright, puncture now. This goes in first. If you remember that the orange was facing out. So we're going to go and put this one backwards. Okay, here we go. So it's cold now. Let's see if it lets us slip it in. And unfortunately, we don't want this to actually loosen up where we can't uh, control it. So here we go. Uh, we're going to hold down our crankcase. There we go. All right, let's see if we can just slip it right in, okay? Here we go. I doubt it, but we'll see. Oh, it goes two sides, so let's figure out which one we want. See, it says TPL. That means it's Tata brand. So these are Tata bearings. Okay. So we probably want it this way. And yep, it won't let us fit it in as we'd like it to be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna force it in again with the compression. Want to make sure we secure it though. Take okay, TPI Taiwan. So let's see which one we want to face it outward. It's pretty much mostly looks the same. It looks really much the same. You can see there's no difference in sides. So we're just gonna go and face it out like this. And we'll try to keep the numbers on top if, if there is a number. There we go. It's 604LU. So reference from there. Okay, we're going to go in back to our compression. And we're going to fix this on top. Okay, it's going to be hard to do now. Now that the crankshaft is actually opposite direction, it could fall off easily. But we want to go and get everything here squared away. Okay, here we go. Put this back here, that way you can see me compress it in now. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is gonna go, we're gonna compress this in. You can see there, it's not going in much at all. But we wanna flush as much as we can. And then we're gonna go ahead, get back in here. And let's see, we can use a bigger one. Okay, this one we don't wanna do because it's still it's too small for it. We want, don't wanna damage it. So let me go and get a bigger uh, socket here that'll fit it much more nicer, just directly in. Okay, I think we found our socket. This socket looks pretty good. It's a 32 millimeter. I think we're gonna use this flat side because we don't want to cause any kind of puncture. And we're gonna go and fit our thing right in there. So let's see if this one works. All right, we're gonna go bring back our crankcase. I had it uh, sitting here just to make sure that the stroker, it's not gonna, gonna interfere. So let's go lift it back out. We're gonna flip it around. We're gonna bring our seal in as well. And we're gonna get this thing back to better original. Okay, let me go ahead and get the camera a little rested and adjusted for you. So I can see the angle here. There we go. We're gonna hold on to this shaft here. Okay, first of all, we're gonna go and dip this in there. There we go, and it fits right on there, you can see here. See it there, it just fits right in perfectly. And again, it won't cause any damage because it's supporting its outer, um, pretty much diameter frame as well. Got the resolution here. still see it there we go we're gonna go ahead and start the jack again now this one you have to look at it carefully because we're not wanting to go all the way out maybe some ways because we have some dip to do Gonna go into the little dip first. Okay. 
then we can start seeing the pressure move in. Okay. Make sure it's even. Almost starting to feel it. When it gets closer, we want to start aligning it. Grip it. Okay, here we go. Oh, not yet. Right, wait, go. Let's see how much more. Oh, almost there. Okay, we might want to start lining it now. And then we're going to have to look from the other side to see how far it's going in. 